Nothing here but athletics has made good fodder for this sports show. British runner Mo Farah, the more talked about. Uganda's Joshua Chapter Gay, another resounding highlight. The Ugandan took silver at the 10,000 meters World Athletics Championship final. I think it was a remarkable performance by all standards because uh, I think for me he was competing in the most brutal race of the 10,000 meters I've watched in recent history. Chapter Gay has put his miserable withering at the World Cross Country Championships last March to bounce back. He is already being looked at as a formidable prospect for the future. With this consistency, Chapter Gay could be in for a gold at the, at the Tokyo or Tokyo Olympics in three years' time, or even the 2019 World Championships that will be in Doha. I think he's that guy destined for that. While the shine is on Chapter Gay, Uganda's hopes for more success in London lie in other distance runners. Solomon Mutai, Robert Chemonges, and Alex Chesakit will contest Sunday's marathon. With a deep field of contenders, speculation about another medal has risen as much debate around it. Now, any breakthrough for yet another Ugandan runner could give commentators plenty to talk about. With Ethiopian Kenya runners tipped to dominate, the marathon title could still be anyone's for the taking. The only difference with championship races, unlike city marathons, is they are too unpredictable. City marathons are a little faster, championship races are a little slower, and that's where the tactics do come in. Uganda will look no further than the distance races for more medals. While Chapter Gay hits the track yet again in the 5,000 meter race, his compatriots will be expected to put in their best runs and surpass the single medal won two years ago. Leon Sanyange, CGTN, Kampala, Uganda. Right now, joining me for further insight into the 2017 World Championships in the British capital, I'm, jo I'm joined now by CGTN's Celestine Caronet in studio. Celestine, thanks for joining us. Obviously, the first gold in London, and it goes to the homeboy, uh, Mo Farah. Can this now solidify him as an undisputed champion? Well, you know, Mahia, coming into this competition, there was a lot of talk about can Mo Farah deliver again in front of the home crowd mm. and what was more special was the fact that this was his final 10,000 meter race uh, because he's going into road running uh, in, in next year but I think um, yes we can now say Mo Farah has joined the greats because I mean in sport what counts are the results and this was his fourth uh, 10,000 meter world title mm -hmm. so I think for Mo Farah he has joined the likes of Kenan Isabekele, Haile Gabriel Selassie um, Paul Targat will wait and see if he, if he succeeds on the road. But I think for me what was really crucial in this particular race was that he ran 26 minutes, 49.51 seconds. That is the second fastest world championship time mm. in the history of the world championships. Um, the, of course, the only man who has run faster is Kerenisa Bekele of Ethiopia. So what was really um, important here was that the East Africans, Uganda's Cheptege, Joshua Cheptege did a lot of hard work. Geoffrey Kamoror of Kenya did a lot of hard work mm. and paid for it later. They all pushed this man so hard, thinking that, you know what, this time around, let's try and run the legs out of him. But if you had looked at Mo Farah before he came into this final, Mo Farah was warming up like a sprinter, using rubber bands, stretching a lot. The kind of warm-ups he was doing showed you that he knew they were going to try to run the, the legs off him. A, a fast pace. Exactly, yeah. and he had known that uh, this is a particular race where uh, Kenyans and Ethiopians and Ugandans all looked like they were going to work together. Mm. But, I mean, in the end, it was, yes, the homeboy delivered. He set the stage, of course, for British athletics going forward in this competition. Hopefully they can live up to the expectations <laughs> of their fans right now, Mahia. <laughs> All right. And now, obviously, oh, another race that we'll be looking forward to, especially East Africans now, is the 10,000 meters women's final. We've talked about Alma Zayana. Uh, can she deliver the goods this time around? Look, Alma Zayana came... Went, into, went to Rio and dazzled the world. Mm. Literally decimated everyone, breaking a 23-year-old world record. Then she disappeared in 2017. We did not see Alma Zayana. We did not know where Alma Zayana went. She has suffered a lot under injuries. She has struggled. She has canceled so many Diamond League meets. We have not seen her have a good build-up the way we did going into Rio. So we honestly do not know the kind of form Alma Zayana is in. Now, 
the thing with uh, Ethiopian athletes is that just because we have not seen them run doesn't mean they are not in mm, good form. So indeed. what everybody will be hoping for in Ethiopia is that he, she is actually in good form. But you're, we are looking at uh, another athlete who really could challenge Alma Zayana here, and that is Tiri Nesh Dibaba. She's seeking a sixth global title uh, at the World Championships in the 10,000 meters. She knows how to win the 10,000 meter races. She first won her first gold medal when she was 17 in 2003. So it is, of course, going to be... It's almost decided that everybody else is going to be fighting for the bronze medal. <laughs> and uh, the, the other trio being looked at are the Kenyan trio. Kenya was defending this title, Vivian Cheriot, but mm. she, did, she decided to run in the road, and she's not coming back to the track. So Alisa Prot, Irene Cheptai, and Agnes Sirop, who know how to win World Cross Country titles, are the ones competing for Kenya there. So it's going to be seen as a Kenya versus Ethiopia once again, Mahia, in the 10,000 meters women. All right, and uh, looking tomorrow, it's another East African specialty, the marathon. What can we expect uh, uh, once uh, they hit the road there? Uh, for the marathon, I think uh, what's very interesting and what is a big talking point was the fact that Kenanisa Bekele of Ethiopia pulled out. Uh, mm. There was a lot of expectation that, you know, this being a London marath a marathon within the London city, uh, he would want to compete because he is yet to really establish himself on the road the way he did on the track by winning a global championship, which Eliud Kipchoge, his biggest rival, has done for Kenya by winning Olympic uh, gold medal in 2016. But, I mean, beyond that, we also are missing uh, Eritrea's Girme Gebra Selassie, mm -hmm. the defending champion, who also opted out of the competition. And this is a man who was the, became not just Eritrea's first gold medalist at the World Championship in 2015, but he's also the youngest. Uh, marathon winner uh -huh. so it is really a very open field we are going they're going to crown a new champion <laughs> in, the, in the men's marathon they're looking at Kenya's Daniel Wanjiru uh, of course no relation to the late Samuel Wanjiru 2008 <laughs> Olympic champion uh, but because he has run in London before pe many people and he won London this year people are looking at him as possibly the man to take over and to win the next title Tamira Tola of Ethiopia is also an, another man who won Dubai he's the fastest qualifier in that field this year with two or four so people are looking at him as also another possible contender again the marathon really depends on how an athlete wakes up that's what many of them will tell you there's a, a lot of look at how is the weather going to be the men run around mid-morning mm. uh, London time it is expected that there will be no rain. There was a bit of rain this uh, in the morning session th today uh, in, in, at the Olympics. Uh, uh, sorry, at the Olympic Stadium. But tomorrow, there's a lot of expectation that the highest temperature will probably go up to 21 degrees Celsius. That's not so bad, especially if it's cloudy. So the question is, will it be windy? And what will the weather, how will the weather affect uh, the athletes in competition? For the women's race in the Marathon Mahia, um, Edna Kiplagat of Kenya is going for a third title. Uh, and Dibaba from Ethiopia, Mari Dibaba from Ethiopia is a defending champion. She's going for a second title. Mm. So those are the two people really everybody is talking about. Of course, you have to look at uh, those, those who are competing for other countries, like Kenyan-born uh, Eunice Kirwa. She won bronze in the Olympics, uh, Mahia, and everybody is saying this is an athlete who could actually challenge for the gold medal. And possibly be a contender. Definitely. All right, Celestine, thank you very much for joining us at CGTN. Celestine Karane yeah. speaking to us live here in studio as we continue to cover the ongoing 2017 IAAF World Championships.